Good morning everyone and welcome to our service for Sunday the 13th of December, the third Sunday in the season of Advent. Of course Christmas is coming very close and I hope that you have your decorations put up by this stage. I also hope that this time next week we'll be able to hold our Christmas carol service, both an online version and a service in the church hall as we look forward to Christmas. So that's for next Sunday. But today we're still thinking of the theme of Advent, that theme with the expectation and anticipation of Christ's coming into the world and into our lives. We think of that in the two senses, preparing to celebrate Christmas, Christ's first coming as the baby of Bethlehem, but also looking forward to his second coming, the promise of his return. So as we think of that theme of Advent, as we look for Christ's coming, we prepare ourselves in heart and in mind to receive him, and today we worship him together. May the light, hope and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. The word Advent simply means coming or arrival and it reminds us that this is a time of year when Christians traditionally prepare for the arrival of Christ. We remember Christ's first coming as the baby of Bethlehem and we celebrate that in the season of Christmas. But we also look forward in Advent with confident expectation to Christ's second coming, his promised return. That sense of anticipation is borne out in the words of the prophet Isaiah, who said, The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. And of course, the words of the Lord Jesus remind us to prepare our hearts and our minds for Christ's coming. Jesus said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Although we can't meet together today, we can still worship God together in this online service. We worship in the name of Christ. We offer our prayers and our praise and our thanksgiving. We seek God's forgiveness for our sins and we pray for the needs of the world that by the power of his Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the worship and service of God. Let's praise God together in our first hymn. John. 
scripture teaches us that when the Lord Jesus comes, he will bring to light the things which are now hidden in darkness and will disclose the attitudes and purposes of every human heart. And so we acknowledge before God our own sinfulness, our own need of his forgiveness, the response to Father, forgive us, is save us and help us. Let us pray. God, our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save us and help us for behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you. Father, forgive us, save us, and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say, Father, forgive us, save us, and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world around us. Father, forgive us, save us, and help us. And for living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son, Jesus Christ. Father, forgive us, save us, and help us. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
throughout Advent in these few weeks before Christmas. I've been encouraging you to follow a series of daily devotions. The devotions, the Bible readings and reflections come from a little booklet called Preparing to Celebrate. It was prepared by members of the Church of Ireland Evangelical Fellowship, each daily devotion written by one of the members. And even if you haven't been doing this up to now, you could still join in from this point onwards up until Christmas Day, simply following those daily devotions. You can read them on our parish Facebook page. You can listen to them on our devotional phone line. And it's simply a way of preparing ourselves for Christ's coming at Christmas and also focusing on the promise of his return, his second coming. In place of a longer sermon today, I'm simply going to use two of those daily devotions that go along with our Old Testament and New Testament readings. So for our Old Testament reading this morning, we hear the opening words of Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the skies proclaim the works of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech, night after night they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the end of the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the book of Reflections on these Advent readings, the author writes this, about those words from Psalm 19. Now I've adapted his words just very slightly. He writes, At this time of year, the days are very short, or at least the hours of daylight are very short, and darkness is always only just a few hours away. In just over one week, we'll be at the shortest day of the year, the 21st of December, which is likely to have less than eight hours of daylight. That's less than half the number of hours of daylight that we could expect on the longest day of the year in the middle of the summer. Well, with the advance of science, we now understand the reasons for this, that it's to do with the Earth's orbit around the Sun and the way in which the Earth, or at least our part of the Earth in the Northern Hemisphere, is tilted towards the sun in summertime, but away from the sun in the middle of winter. And with that greater understanding, scientists can now predict with great accuracy the times of daylight, sunrise and sunset for every part of the earth at every time of year. Professor John Lennox is a Lisburn man who's Professor of Mathematics at Oxford University. And he's one of many believing scientists who have been arguing forcibly in recent years that this very predictability of the times and the seasons points us towards God as creator of the universe. In his books, he refers often to pioneering scientists throughout history who have believed firmly in the creative action of Almighty God. He cites the example of Galileo, who once said, the laws of nature are written by the hand of God in the language of mathematics. In a world that so often assumes that scientific thinking conflicts with Christian faith, even contradicts it or disproves it, it's refreshing to hear the point argued with conviction to hear a convincing argument that faith and science can exist hand in hand. We can believe and trust in God as the one who offers a rationale for the existence and the continuance of nature and science and the universe, while at the same time 
we can also acknowledge and accept that there will be questions. There will always be a limit to our finite understanding. Today, we can praise God for the order that he has given to the universe, permitting life and relationship with him. And we can also pray for scientists that their discoveries, their advancements in human knowledge and understanding might be used for the betterment of life for all. The heavens do indeed declare the glories of God. The glory of the risen Lord Who can compare With the beauty of the Lord Forever He will be The Lamb upon the throne Gladly bow the knee and worship him, my Lord. I will proclaim the glory of the risen Lord who once was slain. Reconcile man to God Forever you will be The Lamb upon the throne I gladly bow the knee And worship you In our New Testament reading, we hear of Jesus being baptised and then led out into the desert to be tested by Satan. The reading is from Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 9 to 13. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the desert, and he was in the desert for forty days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and angels attended him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And again, just a short reflection on this reading from our Advent devotions. The author writes, As people of faith, we must remain confident in the belief that God is consistently at work, even if we can't always make sense of what's taking place. Sometimes it might be days or weeks or months, even years, before we fully understand how God was present during a particular situation. On other occasions, we'll simply be left asking questions like, 
Where is God? What's he doing? Why is this happening? Perhaps we've been asking those sorts of questions recently throughout the coronavirus pandemic. In this life, we may not always be able to get the answers we want to the questions we ask. Sometimes we simply need to walk by faith, acknowledging that while we wrestle with our questions, God still cares for us deeply. Today's verses from Mark's Gospel recall how the Spirit led Jesus out into the wilderness to be tested. It's a challenging passage. It reminds us of the importance of seasons of preparation. Jesus went into the wilderness to be prepared for the difficult road that lay in front of him particularly his public ministry, his trial, and his crucifixion. As each of us responds to the call of God on our lives, God will purposefully prepare us for the acts of service to which he has called us. Times of waiting, times of reflection like Advent, are wonderful opportunities for us to seek God and to prepare for the next stage in our journey of faith with him. Today we can turn to God and ask him to equip us and to prepare us for any difficulties or any challenges that we may face as we walk with him. May we each maintain a confidence in God, in the assurance of his peace and his presence with us as he prepares us for his purposes.
Let us affirm our faith in God in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we pray as Christ our Lord commanded. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. And as we pray, we first hear the words of the Collect for the third Sunday of Advent. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at your first coming sent your messenger to prepare your way before you, grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at your second coming to judge the world, we may be found an acceptable people in your sight. For you are alive and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. And a general collect for Advent. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light. Now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son Jesus Christ came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal, through him who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And today we can pray with thanksgiving. As we remember that Advent is the season of hope, we give thanks to God for signs of hope. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the promise of Advent, that there is always light in the midst of darkness and hope even in the midst of distress. We thank you for signs of hope in our current situation, for the discovery and production of a vaccine which can now be delivered to many across the country, for the prospect of protection from coronavirus, and for the possibility of a return to normality for our society. Lord, help us always to be people of hope who look for and work for the good of all. In Jesus' name. Amen. We also pray today for any known to us who are ill or going through any type of sickness, that God would lay his healing hand upon them. We pray for any who are troubled or in distress, that God would grant them his comfort and his peace. And we pray for those who have recently been bereaved. Within our parish family, we pray with sorrow as we remember the passing of Mrs. Hendron, 
one of our most senior members and subscribers, and formerly a very active member and attender of this parish. We pray for her son Edwin, for her grandson Edwin Jr. We pray for her daughter Olive and son-in-law Noel, and that the whole family circle would know God's comfort and God's peace at this time. Advent reminds us of that certain hope that Christ receives unto himself those who die in faith. And so we pray, grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of thy great goodness in past years and in the sure expectation of a joyful reunion in the heavenly places. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. May Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, gladden your hearts, and scatter the darkness from before you. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this Advent season and forevermore. Amen.